Sorry, I uh, didn't see you there. I was too busy reading the fine print on this contract that I just signed to buy my very own car. Now, me and I can spend the whole summer cruising around the United States together. What's that? Me? What was written in the contract? Well, there's a bunch of stuff, but the most important part was that the bank agreed to lend me the money to buy the car, and I agreed to pay the bank a certain amount of money every month until I pay the car off. Okay, okay, Mia, I get it. Contracts may not be the most exciting thing in the world, but they're important. They represent agreements between individuals or groups of people, and if someone doesn't live up to their agreements, there are usually consequences. For example, the bank agreed to loan me money to buy my new car. I agreed to pay it back within a certain time frame. If I don't, they take the car and we'll have to cross the United States on our scooters instead. The founders of the United States believed contracts were pretty important too. In fact, they referenced them in important documents like the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. Today, we'll talk about how their idea of a social contract led to many of the rights people in the United States have today, as well as some of the responsibilities that may come with those rights. Let's take a look at our guiding questions. What role do natural rights play in the social contract? What are some of the important rights U.S. citizens are entitled to? What is civic engagement, and how does it relate to the responsibilities American citizens have? And our less than essential question, what are the rights and responsibilities of U.S. citizens? Let's get into it. Now, when you heard social contracts just now, did it seem a little bit familiar? If it did, it might be because we actually touched on it for a brief moment in the PDF for our Declaring Independence lesson in Unit 2. Do you remember what philosophical movement it came from? Yeah, the Enlightenment. You got it. The Enlightenment was a cultural and intellectual movement in the late 17th and 18th centuries that emphasized reason, individualism, and scientific thought as the primary means to understand and improve society. The American founders were influenced by many of the Enlightenment's most prominent philosophers, particularly by John Locke and his idea of natural rights and the idea of a social contract. He argued that in a state of nature, Individuals possess natural rights and live harmoniously, guided by reason and natural law. However, inconveniences and potential conflicts may also arise. So, Locke argued that people enter into a social contract. In this case, people voluntarily sacrifice some of their freedoms and agree to follow the laws of a government. In exchange for their obedience, that government agrees to protect the natural rights of its people. He added that the social contract makes the government legitimate and ensures a balance between individual freedoms and collective governance. The founders even included references to natural rights and the social contract in the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. In the Declaration, they essentially argued that it was a government's responsibility to honor the social contract by protecting people's natural rights. And if it chose not to, then it was the people's responsibility to break the contract and change the government. The Constitution and the Bill of Rights took the next step in expressing what rights people were entitled to in exchange for pledging allegiance to the new U.S. government. Before we get into those, though, let's review. What role do natural rights play in the social contract? Americans derive many of their rights from those outlined in the Bill of Rights and throughout the rest of the Constitution. What are some of the most important ones? Well, that depends on who you ask. Today, we'll focus on a few different rights that have had wide-reaching impacts on the lives of American citizens throughout history. Make sure to follow along in your rights graphic organizer. Let's start with the First Amendment, which 
lists quite a few important rights. The First Amendment guarantees the freedom of assembly, which includes the rights to peacefully gather and express collective opinions or grievances. This right allows people to come together for a common purpose and advocate for the changes they'd like to see in society. People can use peaceful protests, public demonstrations, group meetings, and other forms of communal advocacy to shape public opinion, influence policy decisions, and hold their government accountable. The women's suffrage movement in the early 20th century demonstrates the importance of freedom of assembly. Suffragettes, or supporters of women's suffrage, organized marches, parades, and rallies to advocate for women's voting rights. Through their collective actions, they raised public support, challenged societal norms, and paved the way for the ratification of the 19th Amendment in 1920, granting women the right to vote. The First Amendment also guarantees freedom of the press to all Americans, protecting the right of journalists and media organizations to report news, express opinions, and hold those in power accountable. This right ensures that the press can operate independently, investigate matters of public concern, and provide citizens with reliable and diverse information. The Pentagon Papers case in 1971 is an example of the critical role of freedom of the press. In this case, the Supreme Court ruled that newspapers had the right to publish classified documents revealing the government's mishandling of the Vietnam War and the subsequent cover-up of these failures. This landmark decision solidified the principle that the press plays a vital role in uncovering government's misconduct, promoting transparency, and fostering public debate on critical issues. The Fifth and Fourteenth Amendments guarantee the right to due process, ensuring fair treatment and protection from random government actions. This right establishes the principle that no individual can be deprived of life, liberty, or property without proper legal procedures. It serves as a safeguard against wrongful arrests, unjust prosecutions, and undue interference by the government. For example, in the Supreme Court case of Miranda v. Arizona in 1966, the court held that individuals must be informed of their right to remain silent and their right to an attorney when in police custody. This decision established the famous Miranda rights, ensuring that individuals are aware of their rights and are afforded the opportunity to defend themselves during criminal proceedings. These are only a small handful of the many rights U.S. citizens are entitled to. And as time passes, there may even be more to study and use in our day-to-day -day lives. Let's stop and review our graphic organizers before we consider what responsibilities Americans have to protect and use these rights. Based on what you've learned so far in this course, what responsibilities do you think Americans have to honor the rights of other people while protecting their own? It's a difficult question, and one that doesn't really have one right answer. Some might argue that people ought to use their rights to constantly improve American society and the quality of life for themselves and other people, especially for those whose rights are not always respected equally by the law or mainstream American society. We can look to the leaders like the leaders of the women's suffrage and indigenous rights movements that you learned about in the last lesson as great examples of this principle in action. The founders argued that people have a responsibility to use their rights to hold the government accountable when they feel it's not doing enough to protect their natural rights. We see this idea enshrined in the Declaration of Independence, where the founders stated that Whenever any form of government becomes destructive to the natural rights of the people, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it. Both of these arguments build on the idea of civic engagement, or the active participation of individuals in addressing important issues within a community. Civic engagement can look and sound very different depending on the issue and the person. There are many different ways you can be civically engaged in your community, including calling your elected representative to share your opinion on a bill they're about to vote on, organizing a community cleanup with your friends to beautify the park in your neighborhood, or it could even be as simple as learning about different issues that are affecting your community and the people you care about. 
Regardless of the particular method, civic engagement is important to maintaining a healthy democracy. It allows individuals to express themselves and exercise their rights, helps build stronger connections between people over shared goals, and encourages dialogue that can lead to important changes in policies. You'll learn a bit more about these in your PDF, but for now, let's review. What is civic engagement, and how does it relate to the responsibilities American citizens have? So, what do you think? Do great rights come with great responsibilities? But you don't need to tell me. Instead, go out and discuss it with your friends, family, and other people in your community. This is one of the first steps toward becoming more civically engaged and making more history. See you next time, historians. Hey.